we've got Lamp, Squabby, Dr. Chris Care AH, Kim and Nai down in front, Terrafield behind Gemma, Sally Rogers, Lords, Battlebots Boy. Is that J Trig in the corner there? That's J Trig right there. We've got Bill Kenham, Twinkle Toes, Rabbit, Synapse, B3, Caver, and Cave Woman. And we've got Paige. Tonight's story is brought to you in part by MissLore.com for some of the history, DPWR.net for the Denny dates, BooHooArchives.com for the surface history corresponding to the Denny dates, and the Cavernian Calendar Converter, which was written by Brett Middleton of the Fuzzy Physics Institute for converting between Denny and surface time. Tonight's story is from the game of Mist. As I've told these stories, we have learned about life in the cavern. We learned how the Dene came from their proud roots, seeking to shed their pride, yet pride crept back into their lives. We watched it cause the downfall of their great empire. After the fall, pride lived on. Though Anna, known throughout Dene as Tiana, did her best to raise her young son, Gen, to be a decent person, the fact remained that he blamed her for the fall of the empire, as well as for his father's death. The few short years he spent living and learning the ways of Denis writing, called Seltab, in the Guild of Books, was enough to plant the seed of pride within him. Fixated on that blame, he viewed his mother's meddling in Denis politics as the root cause of the fall. As such, his mind was closed to any instruction she might give him. Without any guidance, his pride, for what he believed the greatness of Denis to be, grew. After losing his wife, Keta, from giving birth to their son, Atris, he left the cleft and the surface forever. Consumed with grief over the loss of his beloved, anger at his mother, and pride for what, in his mind, the Denis once were, he began his inexorable descent into madness. He took Atris to Denis with him when Atris was only fourteen not for any measure of fatherly love, or for the love of a parent for a child. Rather, it was to use Atris as a tool, as a means to help him rebuild the Denis Empire as he saw it. Anna, concerned for her grandson, followed Gan and Atris down through the tunnels and into the underground caverns of Denis. It was there that she met a young woman named Katrin. Together, they started to plan how best to deal with Gen. When Atris finally met Katrin, she felt that she had known him all along. As for Atris, she was a compelling woman of great beauty with her alabaster skin, raven black hair, and soulful green eyes. As they spent more and more time together, they fell in love. He thought that he had convinced her to betray his father, when in reality she had made that decision after meeting Anna. She took him to her age of mist, where they would stay after Atris dealt with his father. Of course, Anna and Catherine had other ideas that did not involve Atris sacrificing himself. After Gen was effectively trapped on the Age of Riven, 
with no linking books to use for escape, Atris was the last to leave that age, following Catherine to the age of mist. As he was falling into the blue light of the fissure filled with stars, he linked to mist as well, letting the linking book to continue its descent, ending its journey he knew not where. Upon arriving on mist, he found Catherine already there as expected. Unexpected was the presence of his grandmother, Anna. It was then that he was made aware of the plans the two women had made. That was in the Denis year of 9429, approximately 1773 A.D., the year of the Boston Tea Party, which occurred on October 10th of that year, when Atris was 18 years old. The Age of Mist looked a bit different back then. There was only the dock, the library, study, observatory, tower, etc. had not yet been built. The only structure was a log cabin that Atris and Catherine used as a home. The two were married on the thirteenth day of the seventh month in the Denis year of 9431, January 4th or 5th, 1776. We don't know much about their time on mist back then. We can imagine that it was like one long honeymoon, though I'm sure that most of their time was spent in turning the rest of the island into the place we've come to know. The island in the game of mist was much smaller than the actual age. This was done to facilitate gameplay. Just how much larger the island was is anyone's guess. Eventually, after they had been living there for about three years, Atris and Catherine decided to start a family together. In the Denis year of 9432, approximately 1776 A.D., the year that the American colonies declared their independence from England and Franciscan friars, Dominguez and Escalante, explored the route from our New Mexico to California. Their first son, Akinar, was born. A couple of years later, in the Denis year of 9434, approximately 1779 A.D., a year after Commander James Cook, captain of the HMS Resolution, discovered Hawaii, their second child, Cirrus, was born. Atris and Catherine spent most of their time on the island, raising their two sons with the help of Anna and writing ages. Years later, after Cirrus was trapped on the age of Spire, the stranger would find one of Cirrus's prized possessions, an image of a happier time in his life. It was of him and his older brother playing with a toy sailboat on mist. Included on the image were his parents and great-grandmother Anna. Unfortunately, when Cirrus was about eight years old, Anna passed away. Apparently, she became sick after visiting one of Catherine's ages. The specifics of her sickness are unknown. All we know is that, as a result of that sickness, she passed away in the Denis year of 9441, approximately 1785 A.D., the year that the United States adopted the dollar, the first decimal coinage system, and the year before Governor Juan Batista de Anza, governor of New Mexico for the Spanish Empire, made peace with the Comanches. Anna was buried on the island of mist. She had grown the little blue flowers from her husband's, Atris's family age of Koa, in the cleft. As a tribute to her and her love for her soulmate, Atris planted those flowers over her grave. 
Atreus continued his writing, honing his skills and immersing himself into his work as a means of dealing with the loss of his beloved grandmother, the woman who had taught him everything that was important in his life. Atreus became enamored of the different ages he was able to write. He filled his library with books of commentary on each of them. As the boys grew older, Atreus took them with him to his various ages and introduced them to the people who lived there. Catherine, on the other hand, stopped writing altogether. She felt responsible for Anna's death. One of the last ages she wrote was that of Serenia. Neither Atreus nor Catherine were able to deal well with Anna's passing. Atreus spent much of his time away from his family, exploring his various ages. Catherine, though there is no record of it in her journals that we know about, was obviously in a deep melancholy over Anna's death. As a result, neither parent ended up spending much time with their two sons during their formative years. Please join us next time as we learn about arrogance, greed, and a descent into madness. The End Thank you all for coming tonight and to those of you watching this video at home. And time to end this story right now.